Hey there, everyone. It's Dr. Christine Kazmar. You are listening to Smart Digestion Radio, episode 12. And today's episode, what product do all of these people have in common? Hippocrates, ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans, Christopher Columbus, samurai warriors, those fighting in the Civil War, on and on it goes. This specific product you probably have in your kitchen right now. We're going to talk all about it on this episode. Time to put the fun in bodily function and take the owl out of the bowel. Smart Digestion Radio with Dr. Christine Kazmar starts now. All right. Did you guess what it is we are going to be discussing today? Well, if you guessed apple cider vinegar, you would be correct. And so I was pretty blown away to figure out when I was reading up on this topic that this dates back to Hippocrates, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, Columbus, you name it, samurais. I mean, that one, (laughs) how cool is that, right? So basically, how do you make apple cider vinegar? Let's start with that. All you do is you take crushed apples, put them in a wooden barrel and let them go. And the fermentation process creates a boatload of what I love, which are enzymes, which is one of the key reasons why there's so many wonderful benefits to apple cider vinegar is it's packed full of enzymes. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that apple cider vinegar can help with. I mean, there is a ton of things if you research online, but I'm just going to keep it to 10. Okay. So the top 10 things apple cider vinegar can do for your health. And at the top of the list has to be cell purification. And so the reason for this is there is all kinds of good goodies inside of the the apple cider vinegar. Once you um, ferment it, it creates even more accentuated ingredients such as malic acid. And so this malic acid, this is going to relieve fungal and bacterial infections. And it also can, it can also diminish uh, the uric acid deposits found in somebody. So if somebody has gout, it could help with this. So that's something. There's also beta carotene, which will help break down unwanted fat. So we're talking about the cell purification only in this stage here, of course. There's many many more things to go. It just gets rid of garbage. I mean, garbage doesn't have a chance to to stay around. In fact, one of the things I was reading too is it can get rid of warts. This is not one of my top 10. That's an extra bonus for you. Um, I've never tried this when I was a kid, but uh, if you have a child, usually it seems like kids have warts more than anyone else, if I recall. (laughs) And uh, put a cotton ball with some apple cider vinegar on it and put a little, you know, band-aid over the top of that and and leave it overnight and keep doing that until the the wart goes away. Worth a try. I mean, I think that would be a better idea to try there than something like Compound W, which, you know, (laughs) cinch the nose hairs from you. It's such, such a potent smelling thing. So cell purification. And number two is heart health. And apple cider vinegar helps destroy dangerous plaque. And according to the American Heart Association, about one in four adults has high blood pressure. Now, as a digestive health specialist, I know in part this is because we eat so terribly. There's way too many processed foods being consumed by our, by our nation. So that would be something that people could do right away to improve. But one thing about apple cider vinegar that is going to help with the heart is that it's rich in potassium. It's loaded with it. And so some say that as calcium is to bone, potassium is to soft tissue. If you're looking at a cell of the body, for example, a heart cell, you want that cell to have an abundant amount of potassium, not so much calcium. It's when that ratio gets out of whack, when there tends to be more calcium inside of a cell than potassium, that's when the blood pressure gets elevated. And so what the, what the pharmaceuticals have done is they've created all sorts of drugs or beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, to prevent any more calcium from getting into the cell. But if you really think about it, The real solution to this problem of high blood pressure, if the problem is too much calcium in the cell, it's to get more potassium in the cell, isn't it? Well, there's no way that they could do that. There's no way they've achieved it to be able to do that with a drug. So guess what? Here comes apple cider vinegar. Here comes your diet where you're eating things rich in in potassium, and that will help. So potassium is essential for heart health. It also is good for your heart, apple cider vinegar is, because it has something called pectin. And we know that that's in apples anyways, so obviously it's gonna. It's nice to know it's still in the apple cider vinegar. And this is an aid in lowering your cholesterol. So how this happens is because it's a soluble fiber, it'll actually bind with some, some excessive cholesterol and remove it from your body. So number two, apple cider vinegar is great for heart health. Kind of talking about pectin, pectin again, we're gonna move into number three, which is colon health. 
And what they found pectin also does is it will bind with cancer-causing dietary fats, and it helps to dilute them before they can be absorbed. So that's pretty darn cool, isn't it? I mean, it could help get rid of, you know, cancer cells, apple cider vinegar can. Number four, diabetes. They say one to two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar with water before meals has been proven to dramatically reduce insulin and glucose spikes in the blood. This was actually published by the Arizona State University team. And this this study back in 2004 also made its way into the American Diabetes Association's number one journal, which is Diabetes Care. So there must be validity there because you know the... You know, the medical establishment would try anything they could to get this out of the literature. And hey, this is wonderful that that they've actually proven this. So one to two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar before meals mixed with water, about eight ounces of water, warm water some people like to use instead of cold, up to you, can dramatically reduce insulin and glucose spikes in the blood. That's number four. Moving into number five would be weight control. And so again, this is in part because when you, when you have this, it's two reasons. When you have this reduction in the insulin and the, and the glucose spikes as above, that's going to help curb up your appetite. But also because this is so enzyme rich, apple cider vinegar, it's going to help you become satiated sooner. So by no means am I making this claim that you're going to lose all this weight by, you know, consuming apple cider vinegar. That's not, that's not the case. But what it does is it helps correct desire to keep eating, it's going to go away because your your enzymes are helping to digest food and they're sending better messages from the hypothalamus to the stomach. So that's a wonderful thing. Number six is headaches. So this one I was really digging, dig, digging in on. Hard to find some uh, studies to prove this, but there there's a good chunk of information on here saying about headaches. And I think it's absolutely worth a try as well. Um, I think that there is some link here with the headaches to eye strain and it can help with your eyes as we're going to talk about coming up with one of these top 10. So headaches could be one of the uses for apple cider vinegar as well. Way better than an aspirin or a Tylenol. If you ask me, I will always tell you if it's not a medicine and you're trying some other quote unquote alternative, hey, why not? I'd rather you try that first. Number seven is that apple cider vinegar combats mucus. And so what you would do is gargle one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar with warm water, and there you go. It's gonna help break down that mucus. The enzymes in the apple cider vinegar are gonna be very effective at that. Number eight is it's going to help clean up the throat. And so in this instance, you would take one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, mix it with purified water, and you're gonna kinda keep that in your throat for a little bit in your mouth a little bit before you swallow it. This is going to fight plaque and tartar. It's gonna clean up the mouth and throat overall. It's gonna promote healing freshen the breath even, and it's going to help prevent gum disease. So I think as far as the mouth goes, we have two options naturally. You can do some oil pulling, which is using coconut oil. And if you want some more information about that, just just Google coconut oil pulling. And this is another method that dates way back to help clean up debris, bacteria, and so forth from the mouth. And now you have another choice, which is apple cider vinegar. So go figure. Number nine reason to use apple cider vinegar would be cataracts. Now this one I found to be fascinating. And so what you would do is take one third teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, mix it in four ounces of water, and then get an eyedropper and put it in your eye. Repeat this two to three times a day, but when you put it in your eye, close the lid for two minutes. Now there, it might smart a little bit, just to warn you, it might sting, but there's a lot of cases out there that say that it really helps with cataracts. So again, why not give it a try? In fact, for pets too, uh, one lady I was reading about did this for her dog and it cleaned up her animal's eyes relatively quickly. So how cool is that? Number 10, to wrap up the top 10, are nosebleeds. So if you have a nosebleed, dip a cotton ball in apple cider vinegar, lightly pack it in your nostrils, lean forward and relax for about 10 minutes, and then watch what happens. But to look at the cause of nosebleeds, many of them are dehydration. So obviously making sure to drink plenty of water would be paramount. So what I wanna do now is talk to you a little bit about potassium again, because this is really important because of all the things digestive related with apple cider vinegar that, that I'm a fan of is its potassium content. So let me just first explain a few areas where you may be potassium deficient and see if these sound like, like any of you. So here are some signs of potassium deficiency. Bone and muscle aches and pains, especially in the lower back. 
The body feels heavy, tired. It's an effort to even move. Shooting pains when straightening up, even after leaning over. Dizziness upon straightening after leaning over. Morning dull headaches upon rising and when stressed. Dull, faded-looking hair that lacks sheen and luster. An itchy scalp, dry scalp, dandruff, premature hair thinning and balding. The hair is unmanageable. Mats often look straw-like and is sometimes extremely dry and other times oily. The eyes itch, feel sore, uncomfortable, and appear bloodshot and watery. Also, the eyelids may be granulated with white matter collecting in the corners. The eyes tire easily and will not focus as they should. You tire physically and mentally with the slightest effort. Loss of mental alertness and onset of confusion, making decisions difficult. The memory fails, making you forget familiar names and places you should easily remember. You become easily irritable and impatient with your family and friends. I think we all suffer with that, maybe. Uh, And loved ones. And even with your business and social acquaintances. You feel nervous, depressed, in a mental fog, and have difficulty getting things done due to mental and muscle fatigue. Even the slightest effort can leave you exhausted, upset, and trembling. At times, your hands and feet get chilled, even in warm weather, which is a sign of potassium deficiency. So here, right from uh, Dr. Bragg, we have some signs of potassium deficiency. Do you notice yourself in any of those? Okay, so let's recap the top 10 digestive health uses for apple cider vinegar. Number one was self-purification. Number two was heart health. Specifically, we're talking about potassium there. Three, colon health. Four, it helps with your glucose insulin control, meaning it can also help with diabetes, sort of similar to metformin. Number five is weight control. Number six, headaches. Number seven, combats mucus. Number eight, it helps clear the throat. Number nine, cataracts. And number 10, nosebleeds. There are so many more uses for apple cider vinegar. The main thing is, hey, it's a, it's something that's been around for a long time. I mean, have you ever really considered where the adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away? I have no doubt in my mind that this dates back to apple cider vinegar use because this is just one of those amazing products that everybody should have and make sure the apple cider vinegar that you have is the one that has quote unquote the mother meaning it should be unfiltered you want it to be unfiltered not nice and pretty because that's how we shop with our eyes right that's going to distill and and make all the good stuff go away you want apple cider vinegar with the mother and what that basically means is that it's cloudy It looks a little gnarly on the inside, but it's packed full of all the goodness that you want. The enzymes, the minerals, you name it, you want that. And so I want to shout out to Paul Bragg. Uh, He's just been a pioneer in health for for a long time. And this information that I received is from from his book. And the book is Apple Cider Vinegar, Miracle Health System. So that's easy to find. Any of Paul Bragg's stuff is out there. In fact, the aminos, you've you've probably heard Bragg's Liquid Aminos. This is all dating back to his great work, um, which has just been substantial, especially on apple cider vinegar research. So there you have it, the top 10 reasons for using apple cider vinegar. All right, well, I hope you really enjoy those top 10 uses for apple cider vinegar. There are so many more. But before we close for today, a few things. The first is SpeakPipe. I am looking to feature some of your personally recorded voices on my show to answer some of your digestive questions. And so in order for you to do that, really simple, all you're going to do is go to my website, thedigestiondoctor.com. To the far right, you'll see an orange tab. Click on that and just leave me your question. If you have a smartphone, you could download the free SpeakPipe app and just go right ahead and talk into your phone and leave me your recorded question. I would love to feature it. For anyone's question that I feature, you will get a free t-shirt that I will send out, a Smart Digestion Radio t-shirt. Looking forward to to getting those out to you. Number two, Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern time on my Facebook fan page is Ask Dr. Christine Live, 9 p.m. Eastern, every Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern. To get there, you're going to go to facebook.com forward slash the digestion doc, D-O-C, and that takes you right to my page. Like my page, like the area where it says it's 9 o'clock, ask your question, and then go ahead and ask. Finally, let me know how I'm doing with iTunes. And so to give me an honest review, all you have to do is go to thedigestiondoctor.com forward slash 
iTunes and let me know what you like, what you don't like. I am all ears. Once again, this wraps up another episode of Smart Digestion Radio with Dr. Christine Kazmar. I appreciate you listening, and I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Smart Digestion Radio with Dr. Christine Kazmar. Have the most beautiful day.